Hello and welcome to episode number 7. Today we're creating the entity prefab and we're adding the player to our game. So today we're talking about entities in our game. If you haven't played a game yet, I suggest you go play one right now because it's gonna make it much easier to understand what we're programming today. The game is called Endless Cave and you can play it for free on my website Browser Games Hub or you can also download it for free on Android. Alright, so today we're starting to program our entity prefab. It is going to be the base prefab from which we will build the player, the monsters, turrets, pickups and fireballs in the game. The entity prefab will create some very general things that all the objects need, for example, a sprite in the shadow, or it can do some basic movement and also play the animations from the sprite sheets. So that in the other game objects we can really focus on what these objects do specifically. For example, for the player we need to listen to controls, to, to the mouse and keyboard controls, to move the player left and right. Then the monsters, they need to have a patrol path in the cave. Turrets, they shoot fireballs. Pickups, they heal the player. And fireballs, they need to fly through the cave. And finally, all these prefabs will need a lot of setter and getter methods, especially because we're integrating them into the Phaser 3 framework and we're going to code them all inside the entity prefab so we don't have to repeat them in any of the other game objects. Today, we only focus on the entity and the player prefabs. So the first thing we need to do is go into the prefabs folder and create these two files. And as always, we have to include these prefabs in our index.html file. As you know by now, we're using JavaScript classes for all our prefabs. And for all our prefabs, we want to keep a reference to the scene in which it was created so that we have access to the phaser game object factory. That's why the first argument passed into the entity constructor is called CTX, short for context. And it's just a reference to the play scene. And if we think about all our entities, they're basically visible game objects in the cave. So we need to have an X and Y position and we need to know the key for the entity sprite sheet. That's why most of the properties we're initializing in the constructor method are related to the entity's sprite and position. We're also saving an object with names for the different frames in the sprite sheet. For example, the idle frame for all the entity sprites is going to be frame zero and the hurt frame is going to be number three. Next, we also want to build a very simple state manager for each entity because every entity can be in a different state in a different moment in the game. For example, we can have an idle state, a walk state, hurt state or a dead state where the entity is not even alive anymore. Finally, we also want to save what was the last state that the entity was in. Also for an entity, we want to know which direction it is currently facing and what was the last direction it was facing. Every entity also has a health pool, which we set to one by default. And as most of our entities have the ability to move in the cave, we will set a speed object, which records the base speed, the current speed and the maximum possible speed. By default, we just set it to zero. So now we have saved a lot of important information about an entity. And we're going to need this entity to draw the sprite, animate the sprite and allow interactions with the player. Let's start by drawing the sprite and the shadow for the entity. Because we have saved a reference to the phaser 3 scene in this.ctx, we can simply use the phaser 3 object factory and create a sprite object for the entity sprite. Add.sprite is a phaser method and it requires three arguments, the X and Y coordinates and the key of the sprite's sprite sheet. We also set the origin to the center of the sprite because it's gonna make rotating and moving and facing different directions easier when the anchor point is in the center. And now we can go to the play scene and use the entity prefab to create a player sprite. If you hit refresh now, you will see your player sprite on the screen 
moving upwards because the camera keeps moving down deeper into the cave. The little dude exists now as an entity and he has all the important information saved in his properties. Let's now add another method to the entity prefab which is called update sprite direction. As you remember in the constructor method we saved a property called this direction and it always saves the current direction of the entity in which direction it is looking. So this update sprite direction it checks the value of the current direction and sets the angle of the sprite. Because in our sprite sheets by default the sprites are looking down, an angle of zero means the direction is facing downwards. Consequently, facing left is an angle of 90 degrees, facing right is an angle of minus 90 degrees, and facing up is an angle of 180 degrees. And if we create a sprite, we also want to have a method to destroy the sprite. Now, let's also add a shadow to the entity. Again, we make use of the phase with 3 object factory, but this time we're creating a graphics object. I just want to point out again, because we have saved a reference to the phaser 3 scene in this.ctx, we have access to the phaser methods. For our shadow, we're going to draw a transparent circle. We give it a black color and a radius of 20 pixels. And because we're creating a shadow, we also need a method to destroy it. And now very important, in the entities constructor method, we have to create the shadow before we create the sprite because then the sprite will be standing on top of the shadow and that's exactly what we want. Also I made a mistake by using the destroy methods in the wrong places, so let's just remove them all together from the create methods. And now if we refresh the browser window, we see that our player has a nice shadow below him. There is just one last thing missing, because we are creating the player by using the entity prefab. However, we want our player to be an actual player prefab. And if you're, as you remember from the introduction of this video, I said that all these special game objects are going to extend the entity prefab. So let's do this right now. So first of all, we create the player class and it extends the entity class. And in the constructor, we pass it the same arguments that we did for the entity prefab. And because right now the player prefab doesn't have any additional functionality, we only need to call the super method which calls the parent's constructor. And now in our play scene, we can replace the entity with the player prefab. And when we refresh the browser, we see that everything looks the same. We have now a player prefab which extends the entity prefab. It has a sprite, it has a shadow, and that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. In the next video, we'll continue adding more functionalities to the entity and to the player prefabs. Please subscribe to the channel and like the video. And if you're not following me yet on Twitter, you can follow me there for more game updates. And again, thanks so much for watching and have a great day.